Hi everyone, and welcome to this short video on speciation, one of the last topics in Module 2 in Unit 1 Biology. So speciation is the process by which new species of organisms develops. So a species, which is an important definition, can be defined as a group of organisms that can breed with each other to produce fertile offspring. So there are two important facets to that definition. It's the group of organisms that could breed and also their offspring must be fertile. So gene flow or interbreeding can occur among members of the same species, but not between populations of different species. And this is referred to as the biological species concept. However, there are several issues with this concept. Organisms can produce asexually. Extinct organisms and we can determine if organisms can interbreed with each other if reproduction can be observed. But we can't observe that with extinct organisms, right? Sometimes two different species can retain some degree of gene flow. So domestic dogs and wolves, but they are different species, right? And they produce fertile offspring. So hmm. when members of the same species are found in different parts of the world, it is difficult to determine whether they will interbreed with each other and whether these offspring will be fertile. And finally, it has been observed that organisms which would not normally interbreed with each other can do so in captivity and produce fertile offspring. So there are a number of issues with the biological species concept. It's just for you to be aware of them. All right. So there are two main types of speciation, sympatric and allopatric. Okay. So sympatric speciation is where new species are formed while the individuals are involved. The individuals are reproductively isolated but live in the same geographical location. Don't worry, we'll get to examples of these. An allopatric speciation is where the individuals are reproductively isolated and live in different geographical locations. And you'll see examples of these. So let's take a look at what reproductive isolation is. This occurs when organisms are prevented from interbreeding. So let's take a look at this example. In a group of interbreeding plants which flower during the day, Mutations can arise in some of them and cause some of the flowers to reproduce at night. So now the plants that flower during the day will attract different agents of pollination, right? From the plants that flower at night. So now because of this, gene flow will no longer occur between the plants that flower in the day and the plants that flower in the night. So eventually, over years and years and years, the two plants will form two different populations and they will never exchange alleles because they use two different means of pollination, one in the night, one in the day, right? So even hundreds of years, more changes can occur and they will eventually become different species, okay? So it's all down to mutations and things like that. So this is reproductive isolation. So let's take a look at sympatric speciation. So this could be brought about by a number of different isolating organisms such as behavioral isolation, temporal isolation, and polyploidy. So behavioral isolation, an example is fireflies. So in fireflies, there are different courtship rituals, right? So some fireflies flash the lights in certain sequences to attract females of the same species. So now if a mutation will arise in some of these fireflies, they will cause a different sequence in the flashing of lights and this could actually attract different female fireflies so soon there will be two different groups of um, fireflies with different flashing lights and eventually over hundreds of years they can become two different species so this is behavioral isolation temporal isolation now so let's take an example of frogs they all live in the same area and originally they are able to interbreed and produce the fertile offspring Originally, they may be fertile in only one month, in the month of February. Mutations can arise, causing some of them to be fertile in another month, like March. So soon, there will be two groups of frogs, some of them which are fertile in February, some of which are fertile in March, and eventually, they will become different species. So that's temporal time, right? And finally, we have polyploidy, which is a type of chromosomal mutation in which there's an increase in the number of sets of chromosomes and new species can be produced this way, all right? So you can take a look at, um, at this explanation here, but e essentially, if you look at my diagram, it's a summary of what's going on here. So normally, they will have 
two sets here, one and two from the two parents. However, mutations can arise, and now you might have more from one of the, um, the other parents. So you might, instead of taking one and one to form the daughter, you might take two from here and one from here, and you have triploidy. All right? But you can take a look at this, and you will understand. Now let's move on to allopatric speciation. So this type of speciation occurs as a result of geographical isolation. So an example occurred in England where mosquitoes, right? Some mosquitoes went um, into the subway tunnels, right? This is when the first subway tunnels in England were being built, right? And they had to feed on rats and mice and obviously humans. The mosquitoes bite humans. So the mosquitoes that went into the subway tunnels could not go back up, right? So over that amount of years, or hundreds of years, many mutations would have occurred between the mosquitoes above and the mosquito below the ground, and no gene flow would occur between them because they were being isolated from each other. So over time, they, um, they developed into two different species who could not mate even if humans brought some of the ones from below up to the top. Uh, they noticed that the two of them could not mate, and that therefore they became two different species over time. Another example can be seen in this lake in Kenya called Tilkana. So there's a species of fish there called Tilapia nilotica. Over a period of time, the water level in the lake rose considerably and flooded a crater close to the lake, right? So let me explain this story for you. So originally there's a lake here, right? This is the Tilkana Lake, right? And there, there was some very unusually heavy rainfall and the lake burst its bank. And there was a crater close to it here. So eventually, some of the water spilled over into the crater along with some of the tilapia. So over hundreds of years now, some of the tilapia that went into this small crater created an ecosystem for themselves. And over that time, mutations would have occurred and they would have become two different species. The ones that live here and the ones that live in the, um, the crater, right? So. Now we know that they are Tilapia nilotica, the original ones in the um, in the lake, and the ones that went in the crater are now called Tilapia volcani. All right, so this was a short video on the different um, aspects of speciation. I hope you guys learned something. I will zoom out so you could take some screenshots of the notes. All right.